says I'm available to do it. And as Christians, we need to be having cash in our pocket all the time, ready to give, ready to, to minister in the name of Jesus to somebody. All right. Praise God. Woo. Man, we've already, we've already had church here, huh? Man, oh man, this is good. All right, praise God. Well, we're going to be talking about faith. We're going to get back into the faith message here. Talking about faith. Quick review. We've talked about different kinds of faith that are not faith, but we think they're faith, but they're not faith. And it's the reason why a lot of times when we step out to do something in faith and we don't get no results, we think we're operating in faith, when in fact we're not operating in faith. And then we go around and we just say, well, obviously faith doesn't work. Well, that brand of, brand of faith doesn't work, but true, genuine faith does work. And so what we're learning here is what, what is faith and what is not faith so that we can see what the mistakes that we've made in the past so that we can get on the genuine faith and begin to operate in the things of God the way we were meant to. And some of the examples of this we talked about, the very first one was imitation faith. And an imitation faith is where you see somebody operating in faith and then you try to imitate them. And you don't know from where their heart and how they're operating about true genuine faith. Uh, an excellent example of this was Acts uh, chapter 19 with the seven sons of Sceva. And they were exorcists and they were watching Paul casting out devils, healing people. I mean, they, even cloths coming from his body were going to other people, and they were getting healed. And they said, hey, guys, hey, brothers, we can do this. He's using this name of Jesus thing. So they go up, and they, they try to imitate Paul, and they go, they go, okay, now, how, how do you do that? He's good. I think he stood like this, and he put his hand out like this, and then and he kind of kind of went, in the name of Jesus, you know, I think that's, isn't that, okay, in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches, we command you to come out. I'm not sure I'm standing right on. See, we do this kind of stuff. Now, see, I'm, I'm being, you know, overblown on this, but this is what we do. Paul has a relationship with God. He knows how to walk in faith and do it properly. He knows how to use the name of Jesus right. But they don't. In fact, the evil spirits came and told him, he says, well, you know, J Jesus we know and Paul we know, but who are you? And just beat them to soup, man. I just beat the soup out of them. And they're all laying in the hospital beds, all lined up. And they're all sitting there going, you know, this casting out devils things don't work. This faith stuff don't work. How many of us have done this kind of stuff? And then we testify everywhere we go. Oh, forget that faith stuff. Don't listen to that faith teaching because it don't work. Were they in faith? They weren't operating in faith. That is imitation faith. Another faith that we talked about was presumptuous faith. For those of you that would like to go back and review, we record these messages, go out and charisfamily.org, and you can get caught up on these messages so you can be up, up front with this, all right? The second one was presumptuous faith, that you can't presume because Mama's got great faith, and Daddy's got faith, and the pastor's got faith, and, and just because I'm in their presence, I'm operating in faith. That's presumptuous. Look, faith is something that you engage with God in. You don't write on the shirt tails of others. Amen. And when we're walking in presumptuous faith, and then we fail, we run around and tell everybody, well, that faith stuff don't work. And we've got to learn to walk in the true, genuine faith that God has designed for us to walk in. The heaven kind of faith. God's not going to change His method of walking in faith just for us. We adjust to Him. He don't adjust to us. We need to adjust to Him. Amen. So we studied that. And then we went to baseless faith. And that was the last time that we got together and we talked about baseless faith. Faith in God is based on hearing from Him. And here's the thing. A lot of times we're just going to say, I'm going to believe that I receive this, and God's spoken. Nothing to you about believing for that. And so we just take it upon ourselves that we're just going to believe whatever we want, and take whatever we want, and do whatever we want, and just and God's going to have to bless it. 
You have no basis. You, you know, what scripture are you standing on? What word did you get from God? You can stand on that. What revelation has risen up on the inside of you that is, that's gotten so real on the inside, that is mine and I ain't leaving without it. you got a foundation and a base for your faith now. Versus just randomly going, well, I, I want that and so I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to believe that I receive it in faith. I'm just going to, yeah. God didn't tell you maybe you can even have that. Now, if in the Word it says, whosoever believeth, then it's for everybody. But when a promise is made in the Word of God and it wasn't, pro it wasn't necessarily promised to you, you need to hear from God that God says, yeah, I want you to stand on that verse. I want you to, that, that's for you. I want you to stand on that. See, we're learning how, the mistakes that we've made in the past so that then we start talking about real faith, heaven faith, God faith, then we can successfully walk in the faith of God. Amen. That was a whew, quick run through right there. But I just wanted to get you a little up to steam of where we're at. Because today we're going to talk about faith to abide and do. Now we're going to start talking about how to operate in faith properly. Not the mistakes that we've made in the past, but how do we operate in faith. So we're going to, let's go to Rom, Romans 3.3, 3. these are our foundation scriptures. Romans 3, 3, and 4. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Romans 3, 3, and 4. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and might overcome when thou art judged. Just because somebody had a faith failure, or failed to operate in faith, what they thought was faith, and then they start testifying about how faith don't work, just because their unbelief was evident, doesn't make the word of God of no effect. It doesn't mean the Word of God doesn't work. It doesn't mean that faith doesn't work. It just means that they failed to work faith the way it was meant to be worked. So let every, every man be a liar and let God be true. He's faithful to His Word and He's faithful to the faith that He has given us to operate in. Amen. So when you hear testimonies of people that are contrary to what the Word of God says, and they're, they're, almost, they're, they're almost indicting God and saying, well, you know, God didn't come through. I mean, uh, what's the matter with that? You know, huh, really? God doesn't lie. So we need to humble ourselves and go, look, if I tried to walk in faith here and it didn't work, it ain't God. Who's, it, it's me. And that's okay. God will step you through it. God will teach you and train you. That's what discipleship is about. Learning how to do it right and making your mistakes. Like I said before, there's, you know, when, it, when a baby first begins to try to get up and walk, you know, they fall down more than they walk. And can you imagine, find, you know, c coming down the row here is a 27-year-old guy and he's crawling. And you're going, what are you doing? He goes, that, that, that walking stuff don't work. Huh? That's silly. Well, so is it when we approach God that same way. Faith works if we work it right. Let's, let's humble ourselves to Him and let's do it His way. Amen? All right. Thank you, Jesus. Is He a good God or what? Let's go to John 15. Jesus is pretty... He's pretty hard-hitting. He, he doesn't make no bones about nothing. You're going to find this out. The more you're in the Word of God, the more you're going to find this out about God. He's, it's black or white with Him. You're either in or you're out. You're all on or you're all out. You're either, you're either there or you're not. I mean, He is just that adamant about it. And He, and, and he don't go with the, the, the lukewarm where you're half in and you're half out. Remember, he's to the Laodicean church. He said in the third chapter of Revelation, he says, 
He says, I, you guys are neither hot nor cold. You're lukewarm. And he says, I spew you out of my mouth. And behold, I'm on the outside now knocking. He'd rather you be hot or cold because if you're cold, there's something to minister to and get you back going. If you're hot, yeah. But if you're lukewarm, there's nothing to minister to. Because when you think you're all right and you're not willing to admit you're not all right, you're not teachable and you won't progress on and you won't, you're not disciple material. You can't be discipled and you can't be grown. Amen? So here, here's Jesus. Here, here's an, an example of many. He says, abide in me. This is John 15, 4. He said, abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. What is he saying there? He says there's only two roads to go. You're either hooked into me or you ain't hooked into me. If you're hooked, so he's saying, hook into me. Get your substance from me. Get your life from me. There's no two ways about it. We need to be absolutely dependent on God. Living, abiding is living in him and he's living in us. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, quantification, you got to be abiding in him. And I, and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can what? Do nothing. Nothing of the kingdom for sure. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> but if you're abiding in him, you're going to be quite useful for the master. Amen. And you're going to have this awesome relationship with him. So without the source, uh, you don't got nothing. So he goes on. Well, in fact, if you look at verse 6, I don't have that in my notes, but in verse 6, he goes on to say, those that don't abide in me, you know, let's look at the opposite of that. I mean, what I'm saying here. He says, I just cut you off and throw you in a fire. He's pretty black and white, isn't he? He's pretty severe. He says, if anyone does not ab abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them in the fire, and they are burned. Wow. The master just said that to, to us. He's, he's, he's telling us that, this is a black and white situation. We need to get our source from Him. He needs to be our all in all. But now listen, in verse 7, If you abide in me, and what my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. Now, these two verses, <coughs> Jesus is really laying it down here. Remember what Jesus said uh, before he ascended into heaven? He gave some last-ditch messages to his disciples before he went into heaven. And one of the things he said to them, he says, I want you to make disciples of the nations. He didn't, now notice he's, he didn't say that, make converts of the nations. Just make them this one-time convert experience and there you go. He said, I want you to make disciples of the nations. What is that? A disciplined follower. A disciplined follower. That's what Jesus said. That's what I want as a church. Disciplined followers. Those are the ones that abide in me. Those are the ones that care for me. Those are the ones that I'm looking for, that my Father's glorified by. Those that do what now? Abide in me, and my words abide in you, then you will ask what you desire. Now, a lot of people have taken this verse and go, see, anything I desire, I can just say, that's mine, and I claim it in Jesus' name. That's not what he's teaching here. Look, if you're a disciple, then you have the Master's heart. If, he, if you're abiding in Him and hearing His words and obeying Him, then you're not going to desire anything contrary than His desires. So your desire will be His desire because as a disciple, you love what He loves and you hate what He hates. 
So when, when Jesus says this, he says, you'll ask, you will ask what you desire. Your desire will be his desire. That's why he can get it to you. And you can put your faith in it. Amen. Now this is a key to faith and how it operates here. But you've got to be abiding and living in him. He's got to be your source. You have to be just, man, hooked in. I mean, he is your life. And then you're hearing his words. Hearing what he's saying. And those words come in on the, into the inside of you. And they are a treasure to you. They are valuable to you. To the place to where, what do you want me to do with this word? What, you're, you are my master. And you have a word for me. And I want to obey it. It's my desire. My desire is your desire. You know, your desire is my desire. And when you're hooked in like that with him, whatever you desire and begin to stand in faith, are, you will get it. When, when Danny decided he's going <coughs> to, he, he's obedient to God. He heard something from God. If it just stopped there, it ain't worth much. And notice what he says here. It says, by you abiding in me, my words abide in you, and your, and your desires are my desires, which means you're going you're to obey his word. Then you glorify the Father, you bear much fruit, and it's proof positive that you're my disciple. But if you're going your own way, making your own decisions and doing whatever you want, and not abiding in him, not asking Him, including Him in your life 24-7. I, I, yeah. I know. Sometimes uh, <laughs> the Lord's a little hard hitting, isn't He? But you know what? He preached this to them, but He's preaching it to us. But how are we going to grow if we don't humble ourselves? How are we going to grow? You know, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm the kind of guy that when God tells me to say something and do something and preach something, I just do it. If it clears out the house, so be it. That's, Jesus would preach things and clear out thousands of people. And his disciples would go, would be standing behind him and going, we were just starting, we just had a mega church going here. And you just, you just preached this message that just threw everybody out of the church pretty much. And then Jesus did Knew that he said that, and he turns around and he goes, you guys want to go too? Well, man, I mean, there were going to be big wigs in this big church that Jesus was building up here. Now he just crushed their dreams. You got to be obedient, amen? So when I'm sharing with you, it might make you go, ooh. But if you, receive, if you abide in him and take his word and receive it and do what he says, you're his disciple. And I would dare say there's, there's a lot of people in, a lot of Christians everywhere that they're not disciples. Yeah, it goes over about like this. <laughs> you hear, oh, I can see the wheel turning in your mind. You're processing this. This is only but a sample of, uh, we teach a discipleship class on how to walk in the things of God. It's called Follow Me, and we, we'll start that in uh, September. And uh, we do that, I don't know, maybe Wednesday nights maybe or whatever. We, we, we did that all last year, and it was really good. These are the things that we teach. How to walk in the things of God. And we, and we, need, to, we need to be brutally honest with ourselves and brutally honest with God if we're ever going to grow and be a real disciple of His. Amen? So here he is, and he's, he's challenging them, isn't it? The master's words live in a disciple and take priority in their lives. That's what he's calling us to. By priority of his words in our lives, and we're obeying them. A disciple listens to what his master says, obeys his master to the explicit detail. And it takes time. You know, this doesn't happen overnight. It takes time for us to develop a hearing heart. And a willingness to want to obey that. You know, Abra God spoke over Abraham when he was 75 years old. You're going to be a father of a multitude. It wasn't until he was 100 years old is when he believed God and received a son. It took 25 years of God mentoring him and discipling him and getting him to a place that he could believe God. 
Because God can't get it to you unless you get it by faith. And he ain't going to break the rules and the laws of heaven to get something to you outside of what the rules and the laws are of heaven. That's why it's important that we learn something about faith here, isn't it? Do you want to receive from God? So we have to set our hearts in agreement with him and do what he says. <laughs> faith starts not in something, but in someone and what they say to you. Faith starts with you believing the person that said something and putting your whole faith and confidence in them. Or you're never going to do what they tell you to do. And that comes with a relationship. And it don't come on just Sunday mornings and that's it. It comes with a daily, daily time with Him. Developing your walk with Him and talking to Him and learning how to hear Him speak. Le learning how to obey that. Have, you know, once you learn His voice and you can hear His voice, then you can be confident enough to stand in faith for that which He's saying and then you can walk in faith. You know, we look at people like Oral Roberts and Kenneth Copeland and, and so many of these guys, you know, and the successful faith that they walk in. That didn't, they just didn't get up one morning and go, ah, I got faith now. Man, I'm on. It took time to develop that relationship. Kenneth Hagin spent out days and days and days in a sickbed as a teenage boy, reading the word and learning how to hear from God and how to stand in faith. <laughs> and he raised up out of that deathbed that was sentenced him to lay in until he died. And ended up with a great ministry of telling people how faith works. Amen. Go to Matthew 7, 21. Are you getting anything tonight? Yeah. Let's take this a little further now. Oh yeah, we can go further with this. In fact, I'm going to have I'm going to continue this next week. Matthew 7:21. <clears throat> Matthew 7:21, and here the master is teaching us again. And he makes this statement. Not everyone who says to me, "Lord, Lord," shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But who, who will? See, not just anybody that, that claims Jesus. Lord, Lord. What? Now listen to the Master. He's talking to you, okay? You're His disciple. Who's a disciple of Jesus here? Huh? Who listens to the Master? And what's the Master saying here? He says, not everybody who says, Lord, Lord, enters into the kingdom of heaven. For, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Now, how are you going to do the will of the Father in heaven if you don't have a confident relationship with him? Learn how to hear what he says and be obedient to it. That's the only way you're going to do the will of the Father. It takes time, and we need to really concentrate on our walk with God. Not be so flippant about it. We want to walk as faith powerhouses but we don't want to invest in it. Are you hearing me? This is important. Look, what I'm preaching to you is what the Spirit of God preaches to me. So what do you, what, you know, when he slaps me in the face, guess what? But it's for your benefit as well as for my benefit. What he ministers to me, I minister to you. And I'll tell you what, it doesn't bind me. It sets me free. It excites me. I'm hearing from God. He's telling me, where I'm going wrong and how I can get it right. That's exciting. He cares enough to instruct us and teach us and mentor us. And this is how he does it. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have I not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, done many mighty works in your name? Did, did, did I not stand up there just right like Paul? And, 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 huh? Did we not fake it instead of actually do it? How many want to go through their whole life faking it? We want the real deal. That's my heart. A heart of a disciple is to submit himself to the master so he can become 
Not greater than the master, Jesus says. You'll never become greater than the master, but you should strive to be like the master. You mean we can, we, we can achieve that? Paul says, man, I reached, I stretched. I, he says, even though I haven't arrived yet, I mean, and this is why, I mean, we look at him and go, oh my gosh, look how far advanced he is than where we're at. He says, I'm still reaching, I'm still stretching for the mark of the high calling that he has on my life. Oh, that's a heart God can work with. That's a guy that he can invest the, the gospel of grace. He invested that into him. And, and, and even, even Peter and, and those guys... They didn't have the gospel of grace. He had to, Paul had to minister that to Peter and the disciples. But that's the kind of heart he had. He says, man, teach me. Whatever it takes. Knock me off my horse and put blinders on my eyes. Slap me to the ground if that's what it takes because I want to hear from you. I want to be devoted to you. I want to do what's right, not what's wrong. God can work with a person like that. Because that person's a disciple. They're hot. Amen. That's where faith flows from. Are you getting this? Is it, is, it, is it becoming clear now? This is from where faith flows from a devoted, absolutely devoted to God person. Not this mamsy pamsy plastic banana faith that we think we're walking in. We need to get serious here, man. This is eternity. <clears throat> All right. Verse 23, and then I, then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart, me, depart from me, <clears throat> you who practice lawlessness. Therefore, whoever, now watch this. I want you to pay attention. This is close now. This is our, our, our master teaching us. This is faith. This is how it works. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings, what I'm, what I'm teaching you of mine, whoever hears the sayings and what? Does them. There's a lot of hearing going on. I mean, I, you know, sure as I, you know, one day it's like, because we, we, I mean, we listen to teachings all the time. We're just like, we're, you know, we eat it up. But how much of what we are doing? Huh? You can sit in a Bible college for three years. And if it's all hearing and no doing, you ain't achieved nothing. You ain't gone nowhere. I'm here to tell you, from being graduates of the Bible college, it wasn't until after we left, shameful that it took us after we left that we got the revelation, that we need to start doing what we were taught instead of just being hearers only. And once we become doers of it, then you see some hot stuff going on. Amen. For those of you who are just starting, this I wish I had this when I first walked in the college doors. So I was already primed. You know, how to approach this. Don't just be a hearer. You got a whole room full of hearers, but very few are doers. And it's the doers that cash in. All right? So he says, therefore, whoever hears my sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descends, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on the house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on a rock. I don't know how many people I've heard say, Oh, praise God, I'm a Christian and I'm founded on the rock of Jesus. That isn't what he said. He's not saying that he's the rock and because you're saved, you got, you're on the rock and whew, you got it made in shade. Listen to what the master says here. He's saying those that hear my words and my sayings and does them, I liken them unto a person who's got their, their house on a rock. Mentally ascending to God ain't enough. We got to learn to hear Him and do what He tells us to do. And when we do that, our rock is found, we're founded on a rock. That is a faith that can't be moved. That is a position of strength. That is the kind of faith that we need to be walking in. When we're always hearing what He says and obeying what He says and putting our faith in that, then our house is built on a rock. 
And when the trials and the, and the tribulations hit you, you're not moved. Whew. Are we learning something about faith today? This is how it works. <clears throat> so both their houses looked exactly the same. In good weather, both these guys' houses looked identical. They looked wonderful. Man. It wasn't until the storm came that their houses had a distinct difference in the two, didn't they? For it says, everyone who hears my sayings and does not do them. What's the difference? They both heard. What was the difference in the two? They didn't do. Do you see the importance? Faith, and we're going to get into this next week, faith without works is dead faith. It's dead. It's got nothing. It's got no substance. And Jesus is telling us here, if you're going to operate and walk in real faith, you got to hear what I say and do what I say. And put your faith on that. Because that is a faith that's on the rock. That's a faith that's unmovable. And you will not be... Because I can tell you the storms are going to come. Well, I'm just going to believe that we never have storms. Nice try, because the devil's going to come and check you out and just see what your foundation's all about. Huh? Man. Man. Are we learning something? Yes. Whew. So in good weather, the houses look great. It's when the storm hit is when you go, oh, Ooh. I wasn't, I didn't think I was, I'm not as strong as I thought I was, man. I'm taking a pound in here and I'm feeling a little wobbly need. And some, some people will be able to stand on that and they, man, they won't even flinch. They'll stand and say, nope, that's, God told me to do this and I ain't moving. And nobody taught me out of it. You can't beat it out of me with a baseball bat. I ain't budging. The, 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 the Christians of the early church, <coughs> they were willing to die. Whew. Are you willing? And that's, that's what I call giving your life. That's what that looks like. That's what a real Christian walk looks like. You're willing to give your life for it. Paul was willing to. All, everybody but John was killed. You know, in the of the disciples, you know, Paul gave, gave his life to it. They're not going to give their lives to a lie. Why would they? You think at least one of them would go? Okay, no, 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 no. Okay, okay. This, we we made this whole thing up. No, it's the real deal, man. This is it. Paul saw Jesus on the road to Damascus. You understand? He went out to kill Christians. Now he's joining them and willing to die for it. He saw Jesus. Risen from the dead, right before him. There's no question in his heart about it. Are we that convinced? Are we that convinced? Mm. Phew. Why? I don't. I, I'm sensing I gave you enough to meditate on. We'll just, we're, we're going to, you guys breathe this in. All right, you guys meditate on this, okay? And we'll go on next week, and I'll give you some more. I want to, you know. <laughs> Whee! Wow, was that, was that a ride or what? But you know what? Jesus was this intense. Because I'm just reading his material here, man. Can you imagine him in person sharing this? How intense that would be? I mean, I can, you know. But I'm telling you, a walk with God is worth investing. It's worth giving yourself over to it. Because when you fully give yourself over to the kingdom of God, when you fully give yourself over to God, there's a liberty. There's a power that, that you have. I, oh. oh. That's the Christian walk. That's the abundant life Jesus came to give us. Overflowing, it says in the Amplified. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and you might be feeling, man, I feel like, I, man, I'm hearing that voice more, and I'm hearing that, you know. Man, Jesus came to give us life and give it to us abundance, and then the, and that place says, to the overflow. 
but only to those that abide in Him, listen to His voice, and do what He says. And when you do that, man, He has access to your life. Man, He's able to pull out that heaven is on your side, man. I mean, mm. And he And He presented this to us, offered all of this to us by grace. There's no reason us sinning, uh, dead spirits, um, belligerent towards God, that He would have enough love to die on a cross for us, pay our penalty for us, so that by grace we have access to His kingdom, access to His love, access to this relationship that we can have with Him. By grace. When we were yet sinners, God died for us, man. Jesus died for us. And by grace, he opens up his arms and goes, who wants this? Who wants a piece of this? <laughs> but once you receive it by grace, now let's get on it, man. You know, when you get born again, it's like walking into the foyer of the house of the kingdom. And that's where we live for the rest of our lives is right here in the foyer. We don't go into the living room, on into the kitchen, enjoy all the good things of the kingdom of God. We just sat in the foyer. God's up in the living room sitting in the couch going, come on up to the living room, man. Let's chow down on, you know, go to the fridge and get yourself. Mmm, that's good, isn't it? <clears throat> well, you got enough nerve to come back next week. And here's some more of this. Amen. You know, this is for not to condemn, but to cause excitement in your spirit. To encourage you to go for, go for it all the way. Don't hold back. Go all the way with God. Go all the way. He's provided all of it for us. We just need to walk into it and get and indulge in it. Amen. Anybody here that is not born again, anybody here does not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and wants to enter into this opportunity that is provided to you by grace, all you got to do is just walk into it, believe that God raised him from the dead, and make him Jesus Lord of your life. That's, that's getting saved. You better count that Jesus says, he who goes to build a house and doesn't count the cost, how foolish is that person? And I think oftentimes we have an invitation for people to come forward to get born again, but we don't tell them what is the cost of that. That is completely making him Lord of your life. That's what we've been talking about today. Abiding in him and surrendering to him that you're Lord and master, and I'm the servant, and I am the disciple. Teach me. <laughs>